Hey folks, it's uh, it's Nate again, and I just wanted to, uh, I want to shoot this video here today to, uh, correct the record on Amanita muscaria vargesui, because as a lot of the comments were very helpful to, uh, provide to me, I fucked up a lot in that video, okay? I, uh, I mixed up, I fucked up some of the traits about Amanitas, I fucked up especially in my characterization of Amanita muscaria vargesui, and I just want to, uh, I want to correct the record because scientific accuracy is a lot more important to me than just like bolstering my view count more or less okay so I screwed up a lot but again in this video we're going to talk about some of the characteristics of the Amanitas the Amanitaceae again and we're going to talk about Amanita muscaria vargesui again but in this video we're going to be we're going to be punching it a lot more scientifically accurately uh, on account of the uh, a lot of the comments that I got on my former video about this mushroom So I want to just like give a quick thank you and a quick shout out to all the people in the comment section That were so willing to um share their mycological knowledge with me and help to uh correctly inform me About my characterization of this mushroom. So thanks to them and with that I think we can get into this video so the uh, the Ammonitaceae is um as I've said before, it's a very famous group of mushrooms, and I feel like a part of that th fame, now that I am more adequately informed about it, is that it runs the complete gamut of mushroom forms that you can have. There are choice edibles in the Ammonitaceae, species such as like Ammonita uh, velosa and Ammonita jacksonii. There are deadly toxic mushrooms in the Ammonitaceae, such as Ammonita bisporigera and um, Ammonita phylloides, you know, your death caps and your destroying angels. And there are hallucinogenic, or as a comment was clear to point out to me, deliriant mushrooms, such as this one, the Ammonita muscaria. So it's really a group of mushrooms with quite a load of diversity in it, and it's an absolutely fascinating group, and it's one that, for some reason, just appeals to me immensely. And so I want to make sure that I get these characterizations right. So, first and foremost, the Ammonite the Ammonitas are a very, very vast and diverse group of mushrooms. And we're going to talk about some of the um, identifying characteristics of some, some, I have to be very clear to say here, Ammonitas today. So the first thing that we're going to talk about in this video as far as um, diagnostic features of the Ammonitaceae are going to be the features that are, I believe at least, present in all all of the Ammonitas. And if someone wants to correct me about that again, that's totally welcome. That's why I'm reshooting this video, because of course, being scientifically accurate is very, very important to me when I'm dealing with subjects. Okay, so the first feature that we're gonna talk about with the Ammonitaceae, and we'll flip this one over to get a nice view, that's the gill attachment. You can see how the gills in this mushroom do not run up against the stem. That's because in the Ammonitaceae, the gill attachment is free, all right? And that's a characteristic that no one corrected me about, so I feel like that's a characteristic that holds true throughout the bulk of the Ammonitaceae. So characteristic number one is going to be those free gills. Characteristic number two, and this is one again that I was not corrected about, is the, um, excuse me, sorry about that, had a little burp. But um, characteristic number two that we're going to be discussing is the spore print. And I didn't get a spore print on these mushrooms because again, I was certain that they were Ammonitas and I'm still certain that they are Ammonitas. In fact, Ammonita muscaria vargesui and we'll actually, we'll actually run this mushroom through a key uh, towards the end of the video to kind of, to kind of demonstrate that fact a bit further. But um, the next feature of these mushrooms is the white spore print, okay? So with the Ammonitas, you're going to always I believe always at least have free gills which means they don't run up into the stem and you're going to have that white spore print. Now for feature three and this is the first point that I fucked up in my last video and that's the presence of an annulus okay and this is this is something that's very important okay because 
there is an entire section of Ammonitas that do not have a uh, that do not have the annulus present. That's Ammonita section vaginitae, and I believe that that's actually a section of Ammonita that houses some of those deadly Ammonitas. Okay, so that's a huge mistake on my part, and I'm really really sorry that I was misinformed on that. But as you can see, in these Ammonitas which I believe a comment was helpful to point out to me, are in Ammonita section Ammonita, um, they do have the annulus present, which is that ring structure surrounding the stipe. I believe that that is the, um, that that is the partial veil, I think it's called. But so there we go. So that's characteristic number three, which is present in some Ammonitas. The annulus is present in some Ammonitas. Not all of them. Not in Ammonita section Virginidae, but it is present in some Ammonitas. Okay? And then the fourth characteristic that we're going to talk about is that wonderful swollen base. And that's owing to the presence of the vulva. Okay? V-O-L-V-A. Again, like I said in my last video, we're not talking human vulvas today. We're talking about ammonitoid vulvas. And so, basically, in the, um, I guess you would call it the germination of the ammonitas, they start out in this little spherical, this little, like, egg-shaped thing, and then they shoot out from the top of that. And then at the bottom of the stipe, you've got this remnant, this little cup, okay? And that cup is the vulva, and that's what gives rise to this swollen base. Okay, so that's characteristic number four of the Ammonitas. And no one corrected me about this, so I believe that the vulva is present in all Ammonitas. But again, if I'm wrong about that, please, please tell me. Because these are mushrooms that, as a comment agreed with me on, you don't want to F around with Ammonitas. Not even a little bit. So remember those four characteristics, right? We've got our free gills, our white spore print, sometimes, sometimes, you've got the presence of an annulus, and then you've got the presence of a vulva, okay? So those are your characteristics that taken in totality are going to point you in the direction of an Amanitaceae mushroom, and that's a group of mushrooms that you, again, want to be very, very cautious with. And then a fifth feature, which is occasionally present in the Ammonitas, you can see that white crusty stuff on the top of the pileus, on the cap. Let's get a look at that. You see those white crusty bits? Those are remnants of the universal veil. Because remember, like I said earlier, when the Ammonita germinates, it shoots out from that little egg, and so portions of the universal veil get stuck on the developing pileus, and you're left with this white crusty bits on the cap. But those white crusty bits will not always remain, and in some Ammonitas, they won't have those white crusty bits at all. So don't be using that as the diagnostic feature. Make sure you're focusing in on the free gills, the white spore print, and the vulva. So what we're going to do next is run this Ammonita through the, um, through the key to Ammonita presented by uh, Mushrooms of the Midwest by Co. and Methven, which is a very, very good field guide. I, I would recommend that you get it. I got this one because it was required material for my mycology course. But let's kick things off, all right? So first lead, stem without a ring or stem with a ring? As we've discussed before, these Ammonitas have an annulus. So that means a stem with a ring, which is going to take us down to lead six. Lead six. Okay. Stem base enclosed in a prominent sac-like vulva or vulva not sac-like. As we saw in the base in these, the vulva is not sac-like, which takes us down to lead nine. Okay. Stem discoloring or staining reddish, at least by maturity, or st a stem not staining. This is a stem that doesn't stain, going to take us down to lead 12. Fresh cap color. Is it these colors? It's surely not. So that will take us to lead number 13. Is the stem, is the cap red, orange, or bright yellow? It was, in fact, which we will see with a picture of these mushrooms when they're fresh, which I'll present in three, two, one.
There's the Ammonita muscaria vargesui, or what I believe to be that species when it's fresh. Okay, so we've got that color. So that'll take us down to lead number 14. Is the stem base notably enlarged? Yes, it absolutely is. We talked about that swollen base earlier, which points us in the direction of, again, Ammonita muscaria vargesui. So I'm pretty damn confident that this mushroom right here is Ammonita muscaria vargesui because I keyed it out and got that result. Okay, so there we go. Ammonita muscaria vargesui. And I will talk a little bit more about this mushroom in particular. So we know that this is Ammonita muscaria vargesui because of the results from keying it out. Um, and Ammonita muscaria is quite a famous mushroom. And I vastly mischaracterized that mushroom in my previous video. Okay, I actually went on to say very incorrectly that this is a deadly mushroom, which it is surely not. Ammonita muscaria, when prepared incorrectly, will give you what is probably akin to the, uh, the worst tummy ache in the world. You know, you'll have diarrhea, you'll have intense gastrointestinal pain, but it won't kill you. You know, it's not a destroying angel and it's not a death cap. It's not going to have you shopping for a new kidney or liver. Okay, so there's at least that to uh, go in Ammonita muscaria's favor. This is a deliriant mushroom when prepared properly, which means it'll have some kind of, um, some sort of psychotropic effects, I guess you could say. And there were some comments that were like, yeah, I tried Ammonita muscaria in my youth. It was absolutely fucking awesome. Uh, I'm not going to try it, you know. I just don't think it's worth the effort, you know. But um, that's beside the point. The main point being, Ammonita muscaria has an absolutely famous ethnomycological history owing to that delirium properly, property. And it is a mushroom that can be eaten, not to get high, but just for nourishment provided that you double parboil this mushroom. So you're going to want to boil it in two changes of water, and then this mushroom should be good to go for munching on. Okay? So that's Ammonita muscaria vargesoei, the, uh, the absolutely famous North American fly agaric. This one doesn't look like your, uh, your standard fly agaric, which is, of course, the Super Mario mushroom, which has a red cap and, yellow pa and white patches on it. But um, that's because Ammonita muscaria has a cosmopolitan distribution. So the variety, variety Gasoei, which is found in eastern North America, looks a little bit dif different than your standard Ammonita muscaria, which you would run into in, say, Europe or other parts of the world, because I'm not 100% sure what the uh, distribution of Ammonita muscaria in the typical sense is. But this as our results from the key pointed out, is Ammonita muscaria gesoi, a very famous mushroom, and I do hope that this video corrects the record. Okay, so have a good one, folks. Thanks again for everyone that um, was so willing to uh, help me out in my mycological lack of knowledge, um, and have a good day out there, folks, once again.